Hey, welcome to Books Are Sick. I am Nick. This is week 14 of Books Being Sick. Happy to have you here. Got some stuff to talk about. I even wrote it down so that I can be like slightly more organized. We got book pickups. We got a March recap of everything that I read. We got recent reads, current reads, some Spinebreaker news. Actually, right off the bat, I will mention to you guys, the Spinebreaker shirts, this has eaten up a lot of my week. I uh, spent most of my week shipping and folding. Lots of folding. I can fold a shirt. Not very well, but better than I could on Monday because I folded about 250 shirts and it took a long time. And I just listened to Taylor Swift the whole time and it kind of made the time go a little faster, which was nice. And uh, yeah, anyways, Spinebreaker. I'm going to do a third pre-order, which is live now. So if you're interested in getting a Spinebreaker shirt, I think this is probably going to be the last one. So that is live right now. I'll put a link down below. The current date is March 28th. I will close this tomorrow, March 29th. So just if you're watching this in the future, this doesn't matter to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you guys so much for like the Spinebreaker love. Um, thank you. Uh, you know, appreciate that. So book pickups I'm going to talk about first. I'm going to slide that one <laughs> out of here as well as this one. I got lots of book stuff here. So my guy, Kayuli Rare, Kayuli Rare Books, Kyle. Super great dude. His Instagram page is Kayuli Rare Books. I'll try to link that down below as well. Just a really fun place to kind of look around and shop, especially if you love classic literature, because that's primarily what he has. And he's got a lot of editions and copies of books that I've never seen before that are so reasonably priced that it's hard not to buy them. <laughs> so I got here. I'm missing one, I think. What am I missing? Oh, I'm missing this one. Oh, I'm missing another one too. So there are these New York review books that look like this, like that. And I've just heard such great things about these. There's a creator on TikTok named Brady's Bookshelf that he kind of said that if you get a New York review book, there's a pretty high chance probability that it's going to be a great book. So this cover just caught my eye. This is called Don't Look at Me Like That by Diana Atthill. This is from the late 60s. I also got... Real quick here, I got another one called Sleepless Nights by Elizabeth Hardwick. Really, really cool. I really like these, the way that they design these two. I already had these two. This is Butcher's Crossing by John Williams. Look at how pretty that is, you know? And also Stoner by John Williams as well. This is a staff pick from Adam. Good job, Adam. I'm just going to leave that sticker on there. Really excited, really excited to read some of those John Williams books. I've heard such fantastic things about them. So, I'm going to do that. <sighs> <laughs> also, sorry, so the John Williams books weren't pickups, uh, but the uh, the other two were. And I also got A Confederacy of Dunces. No idea what this is, but it's another one of those books that I just hear now and again. Apparently very funny. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited. It's very dusty here right now. Apologies for that sneeze. Also got James Joyce's Dubliners, because I did a little video on my favorite Irish books that I've read by Irish authors. And I have not read any James Joyce, and a lot of people are like, you got to get some James Joyce. So I saw that Kayuli had Dubliners, and I know this is a very well-known, pretty highly regarded one, I think. So excited to read that one. And I also got a Hemingway book, The Sun Also Rises. I just really like that cover. I haven't read any Hemingway yet. I bought all of his, his like short story collection. I don't have any of his longer stuff, so that's why I got this one. Excited to read some Hemingway. I, uh... So my March recap, I had, a, I had a pretty great March. I had a pretty great March. March is not over yet, and I do have a book I'm currently reading that I'm going to be done before March. So I think all in all, I will have read about nine books in March, which is, it's great, it's great for me. A lot of these, some of these were quite short, so helps up the numbers a little bit, you know what I mean? But let's go through them. I read Annihilation. I'm just going to go through them really fast. Annihilation, pleasantly surprised by Annihilation. I really, really love this. I don't read a lot of sci-fi or any of that sort of stuff, but this was a real page turner. I was fully invested in the story, needed to know what happened as soon as I started it, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. So Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. If you don't read a lot of sci-fi, I would recommend it. I had a really, really good time with that one. Also read We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I love Shirley Jackson. I love the story. Kind of the very ghost haunted house sort of vibes from this one. Um, and just, again, a classic. You know what I mean? Just a classic horror story, which I love. It's very... Ding. It's very cozy, very comfortable. If you're... Wanting to get into some scarier stuff, but you don't want to be kept up at night, this is a great one. Any Shirley Jackson will will do it for you and not like keep you up at night, in my opinion. 
Also read The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. You might be thinking, how have you not read The Great Gatsby yet? I don't know. I haven't, and I but I have now, and I really loved it. It was not I hadn't I didn't I knew this was about like a rich guy. That's pretty much all I knew about it. And I mean, kinda, but <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of heart to this story, and I really, really love just I just loved all the characters, and I just loved following following along for this little ride. It was it was um, again, I've said this before about another book, but it was a pleasant surprise. I really, really love The Great Gatsby, which shouldn't be shocking. It's one of the most well-known, popular books of all time, and that's got to be for a reason, right? But I love The Great Gatsby. Really, really, really good. This was the shortest one I read. This is The Metamorphosis. Actually, is it the shortest? Might be tied with a Claire Keegan book, but I read The Metamorphosis by Kafka. Fantastic. This is about a man that wakes up as a bug, and he needs to figure out, what do I do? I'm a bug now. Do I just carry on <laughs> um and so at first when you're reading it it's kind of like wow this this is like very quirky and clever and, and kind of funny but then as it goes along you kind of realize there's a there's a there's a depth to the story that is not <laughs> it, it's it's pretty upsetting you know what i mean and then the more you read about kafka too i didn't really know a lot about him you kind of think about the story again and you're like oh man that's really sad, and I still loved it. I, it was, Metamorphosis is a really, really fantastic read. If you've not done it so far, you can read it in about an hour and a half, two hours, and you should. It really is very, very original and very, very good. Sula by Toni Morrison. Second Toni Morrison book I've read. Loved Sula so, so much. I don't know if I would put it ahead of The Bluest Eye. They're, they're pretty much neck and neck for me, but just... I've said it before, I'll say it again. Her writing is just mind-blowing. The dev like there every there's a lot of trigger warnings that you should probably look up if you look up if you're gonna read one of these books. Pretty much, I I love haunting, dark, tragic, stomach nauseating stories, and so I love this. <laughs> the characters are so real. She just Tony where Tony Tony Morrison shines like aside from her writing is her character realness you know all of these people just feel so real and i know that's kind of a cliche to thing to say when you're talking about books like oh they felt so real it is just like on a different level with tony morrison okay sula was great this is another short one i read this is uh, the claire keegan one i was talking about so late in the day this little copy here actually has three short stories in it i only read so late in the day which is about pretty well the birth and death of a relationship and it's as good as i was hoping it would be you know claire keegan's writing is Incredible, though what she's able to crunch into such a short amount of time is a talent that I don't think very many people have. So late in the day, awesome. Highly recommend Foster and small things like these as well if you're looking to get into some short stories. And Cujo. Finish Cujo. I cannot tell you how much I love Cujo. I'm blown away by how much I love Cujo. I had been putting this one off and putting it off and putting it off since I started reading, basically. Because right, right when I started reading, I got hooked into Stephen King. And Cujo is one of those books that I had just heard of my whole life. You know what I mean? Cujo. It's very popular. The movie, the dog, whatever. And I just, for some reason, you know, I, I was not too excited to read this one because I read Stephen King's um, On Writing. And in that book, he mentions that he doesn't even remember writing Cujo. He was so out of his mind that he doesn't actually remember writing the story. And to my knowledge, all I knew, it was about a dog trying to attack these people that are in a car. And I was, you know, I was kind of like, oh my gosh, that's probably going to be a bit of a bit of a tough read, a bit a bit a bit boring, a bit long, whatever. Not at all the case. It is so entertaining. There's so many more characters than I thought there would have been. There's so much more going on in the story than I ever would have guessed. And I just loved it. I, it, it might even squeak into my top 10 Stephen King. And I'm not kidding. I really, really was, again, pleasantly surprised by Cujo. I, uh, I really, really loved it. And that was our book club book for, for, for March. And I should tell you, we picked our next book, actually, so let me get into that. So what I've been doing over on the Patreon is we're doing a long list about a week before the next month comes. So we t we do a long list, vote on that, and then the top four from that long list move on to the second round of voting, and then the w winner from that one becomes the book that we read. So I'll go through what the options were for the long list 
uh, that I posted about a week and a half ago real quick. It was The Road by Cormac McCarthy, Stoner by John Williams, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, The Secret History by Donna Tartt, To Kill a Mockingbird, On the Road, Pride and Prejudice, Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, East of Eden, 1984, and Fourth Wing. <laughs> I just threw Fourth Wing in there for fun. It did actually get some votes, but uh, yeah, I kind of more threw that one in for fun. Now, the winners, the top four from that long list were The Road by Cormac, The Secret History by Donna Tartt, East of Eden by John Steinbeck and Stoner by John Williams, which I was pleasantly surprised by. I didn't think that one was going to was gonna pull through, but it did. So then we moved on to the top four, which were those four I just mentioned, and The Road by Cormac McCarthy took it. It was actually pretty close. Secret History by Donna Tartt got a lot of votes. It was, it was actually pretty darn close, and East of Eden got a lot of votes as well. However, it ended up being The Road by Cormac McCarthy. So that is going to be the Sick Book Club book for April if you want to join along. You don't have to join the Patreon. There's no pressure whatsoever. You can kind of loosely follow along, and I'll try to keep you as updated as, uh, updated as possible here and on you know Instagram and stuff. We do have chats open over on the Patreon that are a lot of fun, and we do weekly check-ins and stuff like that. However... Not necessary. If you want to loosely follow along and you haven't read The Road, I'm really excited to read The Road. I've not read a Cormac McCarthy book yet, and I've heard that this is like the best one to start with. And so I'm excited that this one did get chosen because it feels weird to have not read a Cormac novel yet. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like I like the premise of this too. We're in a destroyed America father following a father and son. We don't know why all this chaos has happened and um, just seems right up my alley. <laughs> so The Road by Cormac will be April's Sick Book Club book. By the way, it is just called The Sick Book Club now. Books Are Sick Book Club book was kind of just killing me, so I uh, I just changed it to The Sick Book Club. Okay, um, what else do I need to tell you? That was, that was good. Uh, oh, what I'm currently reading, The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. That's my current read right now. I think I might have mentioned this in my last video. I've I've been so busy this week. It's one of my kids' birthdays. I've been shipping out all these shirts, and it's it's kind of just been a busy week work-wise as well. So I haven't had a lot of time to read this week, but I'm about halfway through The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. Wow, ja, man, just is very, very, very good. I really liked it. I kind of was going to read the... Uh, Devil in the White City, because I kind of asked people, which nonfiction book should I start with next? And a lot of people chose that one, but I went with this one. And by the way, someone mentioned in my last video, actually, so I did mention in my last one, that this is actually historical fiction. I I messed that up, but it is, um, it is breathtakingly good. I, and I, I will just say, of all the books I've read, and I read a lot of kind of what you would say, like devastating books, this has some stuff in it that is more gut-wrenching than I've read in any other book, I would say. So be forewarned about that. But the things they carried so far, absolutely fantastic. Loving it. Hoping to be done that one by the end of the month. And uh, yeah. Um, so real quick, I just wanted to thank my the, the new Patreons. It won't take too long. Uh, sorry. I have it listed here somewhere. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Okay. Ready? I'm going to go super, super fast. It's not too many. Nick Janoshik, Taylor, Morgan, Cecilia, Tucker, Nancy, Hannenberg, Mackenzie M., Elizabeth Brown, Isaiah, Kayla Walters, Kelsey, Suzanne, Harry, Jillian Roberts, Ben Jason, Aaron Cairns, Kathleen Shaw, Kelly Olson, Savannah, Krista Mastler, Elliot Thomas, Ali, Sarah Sir, Santoro. I cannot read. It's amazing that I read. Liz, Brock Blakely, Lady Raquel, Layla Cordova, Lance Martin, Andrea Rule, Jack Vinache, Joellen Brown, Silly Goose, like Silly Goose, Jeanette Marie, Josie Pelham, Nick, Emily Roy, maybe there are more than I thought, Sam, Sam Wardman, John Riccardi, Paul Leo Grand, James Rose, and Corey Ballin. Thank you guys so much for, for joining up there. Again, that's been a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, book-wise, getting through the things they carried, and then I think I'm going to jump right into the road. I still got to kind of come up with a list of books that I want to read for, for April, which I always am very excited to do. I don't know, I don't even have an inkling of what those are going to be yet, aside from the road. So gonna going to figure that out for the next video, I guess. That'll be it for week 14. Thank you guys for watching, and, uh, you know, love you and stuff, and <laughs> I hope you're having a... Uh, bye. <laughs>